analyzing things. We got our wire mesh up on our two inch chairs. We put our chairs at our intersection of the rebar. Everything's up. We help the wire up a little bit while we're pouring. This is our drain as well as our gas line conduit for our uh, fire pit here. So we're just marking height and we'll cut yeah. this to the proper height. You need a pencil, Tom? Nope, nope, I got a mark on there. Right here. So we'll uh, take a sawzall and cut that off. Want a line on the other side? Sure. That'll help. All right, Matt, you're just tying up with our, with my Christmas present. Yep. That Santa brought me. Be careful with it. You always are. Okay, mixer just got here. Mixed up real nice. Helping that wire up a little bit. A little bit more. He probably just want to get some weight out of the chute. Alright, I'll get the camera right over there. Give you a good front row seat. Alright, it's coming down the seat. Alright, we'll get some live footage here. Well, there it is, all poured. Uh, I guess you say I'm an idiot. I got 12 yards. We used eight of it and made it. Uh, four yards wasted. That's about $600 that I wasted by getting that. On the other hand, you can't run short during the standpoint. So it is what it is. It's all poured. I wish I could use that other four yards somewhere else. Uh, but we're busy here, so better to have than have not, right? That's how it goes. Okay, so topic of conversation is biscuits are Ashler slate, biscuits are heavy stone stamp. So what we discussed, and Ray and I are in total agreement, everybody else is against us, we think a nice curved cut here would be nice. How do you do that? Matt, can you run up there and give me some uh, a visual for in and out? So we're eight feet from the fire pit to the edge. I want to be eight feet to my cut. Oh, are you okay out there? <laughs> As he comes crashing through the deck. 
I think I'm pretty close, Matt. Mm-hmm. You see where eight foot is off that center pin? Do you think, does, does that look even to the other side? Looks uh, pretty close, a little bigger maybe, but... Shorten it up two inches? Maybe, yeah. Just hold a 16 foot string at that. Yeah. Right there, man. Like that better? Yeah. Voila. Well, uh, and we'll tuck the border. No, We're not on it this yet. Like it? Yeah. I like it. Okay. Okay. Half in the shade, half in the sun, but you can see the outline of the patio from up on top of the deck. Like I said earlier, this is all heavy stone stamp. Our majestic Ashler slate comes out to this cut right here. All right. Let's get this done. Okay, we're going over it with our texture wheels, and then we're going to give it a heavy stone stamp on top of that. We don't like any bald spots in our texturing. We want it all textured with some heavy stone throughout. I think our cut turned out really nice. I'll head up top here and give you a look in a minute. I'm gonna start stamping right here. I, I need to line up my patterns. So we'll break into two crews. A couple guys out here doing the heavy stone and we'll get going on the Ashler slate. It's nice they left these steps off. So we're uh, stamping underneath them, working right down through here. Usually we have to crawl under, so this is kind of nice. Uh, we'll skin it all and just wheel in our mortar joints that way i put our epiphone joint around the steps so this can move a little bit without hurting the concrete all the way around the post as well going good there's my shade line two more rows of stamp and we're all done Okay, the fire pit area is done. Our heavy stone stamp with our border. I really like our curved cut. And we stamped right up to it. Really nice look. Now we'll get that all colored, darkened border all the way around. We're stamped up to our shade line. The concrete's too wet to stamp here. We just work from the sun back and do what we can. That way we always stay ahead of it. Looking pretty good. I lined the stamps up with our morning stamp. So when you're out in the yard looking in, our joints will line up all the way to the house. I'll show you that down below.
Okay, the problem I'm having, this all looks perfect. This stamped really nice. Where we started stamping in that shade was so wet and we had to leave our patterns here. Now the bleed water came up underneath our patterns and it turned it all to mush. So I pulled the patterns back. I'm letting this dry up and I'm hitting it with a skin to relay that down and give it some slate texture. It really looks bad now and I hate to walk away from it like that. It's really close to uh, correcting. So I'm just, everybody else took off. They're heading to the next job. I stay behind. Just hit this five foot by five foot area and it'll look much better. So that's what I'm dealing with here, right in this shade area. Rest of it looks great. This morning's pour and stamp and the afternoon pour. done hitting it with our skin I think it looks really good now nice texture I reopened all the joints good all right that's how we'll leave it for today saw cutting cleaning coloring sealing tomorrow okay this is Saturday morning final step Steve came over yesterday saw cut Tommy came over yesterday afternoon and put our storm gray antiquing on it so as soon as we get our sealer on it you'll see that all come to life i got my helpers here today this is going to go real quick a lot of rain coming in tomorrow so i'm going to get this all graded up while it's nice and dry so I'm, i'll get a little bit of them sealing and i'll get on grading so what we're using today is what we always use and i always like putting this in the video butterfield clear guard pro 350 mm -hmm. right there we've 75 percent and 25 percent xylene we always mix them it slows down the drying process and we get better results and don't forget your traction control right there give it a good mix Two light coats is always better than one heavy coat. So I'll point out one more time. We use our Epifoam joint around these posts now. How pliable that is. The top will peel out. You can caulk it if you want to. But I like how that post can move in there without hurting the concrete. Just using a shield keep the uh, overspray off of the brick and doorway just kill the bug. you can see how it just brings that right to life doesn't that look nice we double coated the border so the border will be a shade darker than the main body so see how they just work together right down that wall whoop missed the spot Beautiful. So that's how it'll look when it's all done. This will dry and look blotchy. And we'll second coat it. And it'll be good. Nice easy one. A little bit of shielding. Now we can get on grading. This watch that sprayer doesn't fall on your foot. Yeah. Okay. Wall's nice and clean. Okay, I'm gonna get grading.
and I didn't even spill Jim's coffee. So that's how we like to leave these. The homeowners can take it from there or they can get a landscaper. This one's a little bit bigger than normal, but it blended real nice. Uh, it's pretty nice topsoil, quick rake, some grass seed. Be green again before you know it. Uh, letting this dry a little bit more. Matt's getting ready for second coat. How'd I do, Jim? A little bit? Perfect. Good. Really do anything. Touch up the edge. Just the edges. Okay. I'll get a view from up there. And we'll go prep a basement. Okay, Matt's doing second coat. I like how Steven turned that cut on the fire pit and then connected it here and ran it up straight to the house. That should be good relief. Our curve cut turned out real nice through there. Looks good. Gave a long cut right through our group of mortar joints. Then I don't know if you can see it, he turned it through the border. So we're square through the border and square through the border. Might have any help down there, Matt? So what he's really staying is stay out of his way. Tell me if I'm missing spot. How about right up here? Did you not get that yet? I didn't get that. Okay, okay. Alright. I'll get some of this stuff loaded up while Matt's finishing. Be out of here shortly. Hey, before I sign off, I just wanted to say if you're in this business, getting started in stamping, a homeowner, a landscaper, or whatever, and you wanna to try to do some of the work like we do, just start off doing a small area first. Two or three yards, uh, take your time, learn how to do it. Um, don't get, you know, five, six, 10, 17 yards and get yourself in a bad situation because once that concrete starts going, uh, the concrete sets the pace and if you can't keep up to it it goes bad real fast so give yourself a little bit of learning curve don't worry about paying that extra fee for just getting a couple yards of concrete just pay it consider it schooling take your time learn how to do it and it won't be long you'll be turning out work just like this so if you have any uh, questions you know send those comments over through the channel and I'll answer them as best I can. And uh, hope you enjoy the videos. Good luck to you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.